Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Thrive Innovation Series here in Silicon Valley. I'm John Hartnett, CEO and founder of SVG Ventures and Thrive, and I'm delighted to be joined here today by Rob Painter, President and CEO of Trimble. Welcome, Rob. Thank you. It's good to be here. Good to see you here. Well, I hope everybody's keeping safe and healthy uh, during these challenging times. Um, we've all experienced the critical importance of the food supply chain starting in the field through a complex series of supply chain processing, logistics and retail and ending up with food on our tables. There is no other supply chain that is as important as the one that puts food on our family table. And today we learn how Trimble are connecting the physical and digital to transform agriculture. Uh, next slide, Jess. If you'd like to follow our conversation, uh, you can uh, join us on Twitter uh, or on LinkedIn and uh, please uh, share, retweet and uh, join in the conversation. Uh, next slide. Our Thrive Innovation Series, we started that uh, earlier this year. Uh, we launched the series to focus on the future of supply chain and emerging technologies. And every month we chat with key leaders, CEOs, founders and innovators who are shaping the future of food and agriculture. Last month, we were honored uh, to have USDA Secretary Sonny Perdue. And uh, in the coming few weeks, we will have the founders of Plenty, uh, Matt Bernard and Nate Story, to tell their story of how they created a, a, a unicorn uh, ag tech company. And in August, we will be joined by Bob Ryder, the head of R&D at, at Bayer. Uh, next slide, Jess. Uh, in September, we will host our demo day on the 24th of September. This is in partnership with Forbes. Uh, we'd normally held this at the Forbes Ag Tech Summit in Salinas, California, which unfortunately is postponed due to the pandemic. And uh, we selected 13 amazing companies back in January, and um, they will all, they've all participated in our four month program, uh, which commenced here in February. And um, if you'd like to see them, uh, they'll be on uh, the 24th of September uh, pitching. Um, in addition, if you are interested in either co-investing in the winners, uh, you can email us uh, at info at SVG Ventures. Uh, next slide. We launched our uh, Thrive Global series, uh, a series of key challenges that we partnered with the USDA, uh, supporting the USDA goals and also the SDG goals uh, some of the key areas that we will drive these challenges on are around sustainability, food security, supply chain, digital ag and robotics. And uh, last year or earlier this year, we held a Thrive Challenge in Australia. And this year we'll do a Thrive Challenge in Canada. And I'm delighted that to be working with the Alberta government, as well as the Canadian government and Calgary Economic Development, and delighted to announce our partnership working with Olds College uh, Smart Farm uh, in Calgary. Next slide. Uh, so I'd like to thank our corporate partners. Uh, we've got some of the biggest names in industry and we're delighted to be working with them to accelerate their innovation and their growth strategy and, and thrilled to have uh, the CEO of Trimble you know, here today. And on our next slide, uh, who's joining us online today? Um, we've had, we, I think we have a record today. So Rob, you're obviously a popular man and Trimble are a popular company. Um, we have people from over 80 countries and 1,200 registered uh, attendees. And it looks like uh, probably about 42% of folks are from the US and 58% from outside the United States. And you can see it's a quite, quite a mix between um, probably the number one is uh, different corporates. Uh, a lot of, uh, is it a big jump in farmers and the agriculture industry kind of tuning in? So it's really, really great to see. And we still have obviously a, a big um, reach into um, the startups, both growth stage and, and earlier stage uh, companies. Next slide. So as usual, we'll uh, do a live poll. Um, we're gonna have four questions around technology drivers consumer trends and regenerative farming. And you should see that poll pop up on your screen right now. And you can start voting right now. If you want to scroll down, you see the second and third question as well. So you can submit um, you know, your answers. So uh, if you want to start voting right now, that would be great. Uh, next slide. 
So we'll also um, have some Q&A uh, today. So if you'd like to submit any questions, you can put them in on the Q&A feature so that when we get to uh, audience Q&A, your questions will be answered and, and they can be upvoted. So if you like somebody else's question, you can upvote them as well. So um, that's a, a great feature there. So, and uh, next slide. So I'm delighted to be joined by uh, Rob Painter, uh, CEO of Trimble, and I am going to hand it over to Rob in Colorado, I think, at the moment. So welcome, Rob. Thanks, John. Uh, thanks, for the, thanks for the invitation and to uh, all the folks participating from uh, around the world and from really around the whole supply chain. Uh, thanks for taking the time out to, to join us uh, today. Uh, a little background on, on myself, uh, professionally speaking, I've worked at Trimble for over 14 uh, years. Um, I've worked in a number of different capacities across uh, Trimble, run a number of different businesses that we have. I've worked in joint ventures that Trimble has. I've worked outside the US. Uh, and then about, about five years ago, I uh, became the CFO uh, of Trimble. And then in January this year, I became uh, the CEO. So I've had a, a, a really fun journey through, through Trumbull over the last 14 years. Uh, personally speaking, I'm married. I've got uh, two teenagers, and uh, I live in Boulder, Colorado. Um, and when you live in Colorado, you enjoy all the, the good outdoor sports we have, so the biking, skiing, climbing. So that's a little bit about myself. Um, to, uh, to transition to talk about uh, Trimble, uh, we've got a few uh, slides just to give you an overview. Um, and uh, on that note, uh, technology, uh, Trimble is a technology company. Um, we're really in the business of digitizing large, important uh, industrial-centric uh, industries. Uh, Charlie Trimble founded the business in 1978, so we're going on 42 years uh, at Trimble. The original roots were in positioning uh, technologies. At a level of mission at Trimble, we talk about transforming the way the world works. And from a vision perspective, we talk about connecting, delivering products and services that connect the physical and digital worlds. So the culture of Trimble, I think, really thrives at the intersection of innovation and domain knowledge. And so you can see um, some of the stats on innovation that we've had at Trimble over time. We invest a substantial amount um, of our revenue back into research and development to continue that innovation. And the end markets where we've really focused um, in the last uh, couple of decades um, are from our original geospatial business through construction and transportation, and of course, agriculture, um, which we're here to talk about um, today. So today, uh, Trimble's got over 11,500 employees and we're doing business in over 150 uh, countries, um, probably where it's really cover almost all the countries where, you have, uh, rep where, where we have folks participating from um, today. Um, so from here, maybe just to, to, to go into ag a little bit deeper uh, for Trimble, I have the obligatory uh, video, which I think is less than two minutes long. So we can hit start on that and then we'll continue.
Okay, so um, Jessica, why don't we go to the next slide? And to give you a sense of uh, the breadth and depth of, of Trimble in agriculture, um, I'll start with the, our vision in agriculture. And it is to connect the physical uh, and the digital world. Our, our strategy is simply that of delivering the connected farm. Um, as that uh, video uh, showed, we, you know, we've got over 25 years of, uh, of, of history and leadership um, within the agriculture space. And that's created the scope and scale that's reflected on the statistics um, on, on the page. So when I talk about connecting the physical and digital worlds, I'd like you to think about connecting the hardware and the software we have at Trimble. It's connecting the office in the field. It's connecting a tractor uh, and the implement. Uh, increasingly, it's about connecting the data um, that uh, exists on, on a farm. Um, at the heart of our connected farm strategy is that of, of serving a mixed fleet. Um, and by mixed fleet, we mean more than the, let's say the, the tractors and combines, but also think about uh, the implements and the broader eco ecosystem uh, of technology that's used. Now, for many of you, um, you know, you, you probably know us uh, from our guidance technologies. Uh, that is a lot of our, our history. That really is, I think, fair to say is the core of the technology we offering we have today. We cover over 150 million acres um, of land with Trimble uh, technology um, today. And with that 20 plus years uh, of work we've done in the, in the realm of guidance, we're supporting over 4,000 different platforms, machine platforms from dozens and dozens uh, of, of global manufacturers. Um, and so that gets us to hundreds of thousands of displays that are out in the, uh, in the field today. And we're much more than a guidance company. So in the last years, um, we've made significant moves uh, into flow controls and variable rate uh, technologies. Um, we've had a long history, whether it's in um, water management or spot spray systems. Uh, and then increasingly, we have moved into the world of software, which we think is a really important part of our offering today and will increasingly be so uh, in the future as we connect the, that physical and digital uh, world. Now, none of this would be possible if it wasn't for really what we think is a world-class uh, network of distribution partners or, or resellers. So we have over 2,000 reseller partners uh, around the world um, in over 70 countries um, today, which really are a, a backbone um, for us of being able not only to, to, to sell, but to be there for that local support uh, and, that local, and that local training. Um, and I'll maybe go from talking about the, the, the partner network we have um, and use that as a segue to the last slide um, I have in this introduction. Um, and that is to talk about uh, a Trimble Select program that we launched, I think it was in the last 12 to 18 months. And what we do with the, the Trimble Select program uh, is it enables us to work with third parties who have technology offerings that are complementary to the, to the technology offerings that we have at Trimble um, and to leverage that distribution network uh, that we have. And so there's a select uh, a few of the names that uh, we're working with today on the, on the screen, covering a number of different applications from drift control to, to protein mapping, to drone data um, collection, uh, to, to weather scouting. Um, so this is a, is a new area for us. It's one that um, we're, we're quite interested and committed to. And I know many of you on the call um, today probably have a specific interest in this. Um, so we put on the screen, um, and it'll be on, in the chat as well, uh, a link for you uh, if you want to follow up for further information or for contact information to the agriculture.trimble.com backslash Trimble Select um, if you'd like to, to, to follow, up with, follow up with us on, on, this, uh, on this topic. So that's the uh, that's the introduction, um, John, and uh, I think I can turn it to you to to, to start the conversation. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, Rob. And I know the Trimble Select program, uh, Magro is a company that came through our Thrive program uh, a number of years ago, and they've had tremendous success and reach uh, having been part of Trimble Select. So I'd obviously encourage any startups out there that are interested in this uh, to, to participate or, or, or follow uh, on to the, the link that you see there. Um, so before we get into uh, technology, I mean, we're all like stuck at home or somewhere between home and the office, I think at the moment, how things gone for you and, you know, personally, what have been some of the positives and at Trimble, how's it going? And, you know, what do you think the new normal is going to look like? 
Sure. Well, I'll start to say um, I'm incredibly privileged and lucky lucky to uh, have my family has been uh, safe and, and healthy. So knock wood that uh, that, that continues because it's obviously not true for for a lot of uh, a lot of other people and and including our customers and uh, and partners uh, around around the world. Um, you know, we saw in the agriculture business specifically. You know, we saw actually a, a pretty good start. Uh, to the to the year um, there in the first uh, you know, few months of, of of this year, it's an early planting season, um, as as we all as we all know, uh, and you know I think the what we found is that uh, like all of us um, on the phone adapting uh, to this new environment, uh, our the, our customers, the farmers, um, have also done a, I think a nice job um, of of adapting uh, to uh, to the situation that we find ourselves uh, in now. When I think about the the new what's called the new normal and what we've seen specifically at at, at Trimble and with our customers, um, again we have seen the farms adapt quickly to the to this more digital environment, um, you know, and uh, and we've all had to we've all had to do this. And a couple of examples that I could I could share. One we've seen a, a nice uptick in the ability to do remote support. And so and I think we we're fortunate for the years of investments we've made uh, in the technology uh, that that en enables us today to be able to um, help support, train, service uh, our customers who are out in the field and to be able to do that uh, on, a remote, uh, on a remote basis. And so that's been a really important pivot to us because that direct interaction um, with the customers um, is, is really fundamental to the business. Uh, another interesting example has been uh, a virtual trade show. And so you know, we had a good example um, in Brazil where we had over 3,000 uh, attendees at a virtual trade show. And it's actually, it's one of these things where we're all learning here um, as we go. You know, there, there wasn't a playbook for this. And uh, what we saw in the, this Brazil example of the virtual trade show is that we were able to, actually able to, to reach um, a, a set of customers that normally we would not be able to, to reach. You know, thousands of people um, can't all go to, you know, one city um, for, a, for, a, for a trade show. So uh, we, we learn to adapt um, as, as we go. And as I think as I, as, as I think about this new normal on a, on a go forward basis, you know, I'd like to think about reframing that. And the reframe um, that we think about is how do we create a better normal? Um, out of this. Um, and, you know, what I think the pandemic is doing is really amplifying some of the digitization trends uh, that we see uh, that we see in the market. Um, it's amplifying the ability to address some of the underlying uh, issues and challenges and problems that, that the farmers have, whether that's um, dealing with labor shortages or being able to, um, you know, real time make uh, adjustments to production to optimize to, to profitability or to organize data to make decisions better um, and faster. I think these are uh, say these are challenges that create um, opportunities to create a better, a better normal. Yeah, 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 definitely. I think that um, I actually saw a video on on your website around COVID, and uh, I think it was Farmer O'Donoghue in um, Ontario. He talked about right. you know being able to go virtually, and it saved him hours uh, to do a simple uh, you know task. So it's uh, definitely. I think the adoption of the virtual world has definitely been accelerated and people, you know, embracing, you know, digital. It, you know, in your video, Rob, you, you talked about the future of agriculture is automation. Um, maybe you could talk a little bit about that. I know, I mean, we've come a long way in 30 years and, you know, what, what do you think we can expect in the next 10 or 20 years? I know it's a long time out there, but just to get a, give us a little bit of a sneak peek in terms of what you see coming down the yeah. road here. Well, yeah, it is hard to predict 30 years yeah. out. I'm not sure I know what's going to happen <laughs> in three weeks from now um, these yeah. days. But, um, uh, but it also, it's a, it's, a, it's a good question. It allows you to sort of think freely uh, with that kind of time, time horizon. You know, if I look at it from a Trimble perspective, we've been a, we've been a pioneer in automation for, for actually for nearly 30 years if you go, if you go back. Um, you know, 30 years ago, we were best known as a, as a GPS company. Um, in the mid, it was the mid '90s when we entered the ag market with yield monitoring by bringing um, positioning technologies uh, into the agriculture market. Uh, in the late '90s, uh, we developed our first guidance systems, um, light bar manual guidance systems. And I think that's instructive because since that time, we've developed from manual guidance systems to semi-automated to fully automated um, systems. 
um, between ourselves and many other players uh, in the market, there's been an enormous amount of innovation uh, in the last uh, in the last years. You know, for example, um, you know, variable, variable rate, uh, as a, I think, is the next frontier. Yeah. So as we look forward um, in, in the years to come, uh, we'll often interchange the words automation and autonomy. And one of the reasons uh, we do that, or I do that, is when you think, when you hear the word autonomy, we tend to jump to this the future of the kind of level five autonomy, fully autonomous cars on the road, fully autonomous um, farms or, or construction sites. Um, and we tend to think that that's going to be further off than what the, most of the prognosticators um, will, will tell us. What we think about is a progressive series of automation. And so um, we, uh, and so when we think about that progressive series of automation, if you think about it in broad strokes, um, we could think about that from moving from operator assistance, which we, um, which we yeah. can do today, um, to machine and process optimization, uh, and then ultimately to network opt optimization. So operator assistance, again, we can do that today through um, guidance uh, systems. Uh, when we think through uh, machine and process optimization, I really think about workflow. Mm -hmm. And so we see abilities to automate workflows uh, in the in the future. And there, there I would say the, the near future, um, it could be uh, crop spraying, it could be tilling the land, uh, it could be lead follow uh, concepts uh, at, uh, at harvest time. Um, so taking discrete workflows uh, that have op that have, let's say, um, specific opportunities to, to be optimized and, and made more efficient. As you get into full network optimization, and now you're in the multi, potentially the multi-decade uh, view of that, now you bring in, um, you, you bring in more artificial intelligence, more machine learning, and you've got machines that can make real-time adjustments um, on the fly. So picture a planter adjusting for um, the the real time conditions uh, of the soil meets the soil you know the soil um, moisture the the texture and the seed uh, and the seed type and and doing that in 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 real time like that's where you know we could we will eventually see the the market going but again I would say a progressive series of automation is how we see the path to full autonomy yeah yeah. That makes sense. I think, um, I mean, the other big thing that's changing at the moment is obviously consumers, you know, I think 50% of the world's population today is either Gen Z or millennials and, and they're placing new demands or they have, you know, more focus on, on health and uh, where our food comes from, more interested in new proteins, which is obviously creating more demands on farmers and that whole supply chain. Um, how, how are your customers changing or how are you having to kind of adapt and react to to this uh, change, and I'm sure it's something that's been evolving for quite some time, but I, I don't know, maybe through the current crisis, are things accelerating as well? Just gonna really interested to get your, your views there. Well, I think it's instructive to work backwards from the, the consumer. And as you mentioned, the new generation, I've got a couple of them in my um, house who've got to views on this. Um, so whether it's uh, health, uh, or traceability or environmental um, sustainability. I think these are some real trends that are coming from, I'll say the end consumers. Um, and then as you work backwards um, from that, um, that's gonna ultimately influence the consumer packaged goods companies. It's going to influence the retailers. It's going to in, um, uh, influence our, our restaurants. Um, and that in turn, I think could influence policy makers, um, you know, at a government level. Uh, and then if you take that confluence uh, of events coming from consumers and that, and the, we'll call it the top of the supply chain, um, that's going to create a context of change for the farmers who would be um, our, our customer at, at Trimble. Um, and that, you know, I think will impact things, whether it's the type of crop, um, whether it's a quality control um, uh, around uh, the farming process certification. And we see some of that today. I think we'll see more of that in the future. Or carbon sequestration. Um, you know, we think we'll, we see it in certain parts of the world um, is, a, is a real topic today, a real opportunity um, today. You know, and I think like, um, you know, really like you'd see in a lot of businesses, you know, where, the, where farmers can see an opportunity to differentiate and to make a profit, um, they will follow, right? And so whether it, where, where these trends lead to um, market opportunities, 
I think the farms, uh, the farmers will will follow uh, will follow in, in lockstep with with that. So I do think it's something we'll see more of in the future. Mm. And we, we have an audience, you know, here today of innovators, entrepreneurs, and startups that are kind of eager to kind of learn right. more about the farmer and and also access. You know, I mean, it, it's one thing going on a trial on one farm or two farms, but trying to scale that, you know. What's your, what's your guidance there or what, what would you uh, advise uh, some of our, our entrepreneurs out there? Well, I would start um, actually maybe even a little bit uh, on an academic perspective and, and think about segmentation. And so I could uh, envision segmentation on a few levels um, in, in agriculture. Uh, the first would be on farm size, the second on crop type, and the third on geography. Um, I think it's a little too simplistic if we just sort of talk about agriculture in, in, in general, uh, because mm -hmm. there's so many nuances depending on those different uh, factors, right? Is the crop type a, a specialty crop or a broad acre crop? There's going to be a different um, challenge and, you know, a set of challenges to address and opportunities that come out of that. Um, certainly around the world, um, there's different needs uh, around the world, um, and sometimes which correlates to farm size. So the smaller farm size, the smaller tractor versus the larger um, corporate farms they have fundamentally different needs and, and challenges. And, and innovation is ultimately, you know, trying to find unique um, ways to solve problems um, for, for, for customers. So really know the market segment, the, the market would be uh, the first um, sort of thought I have on the on the topic. Now, as a startup or a y y young company, and uh, you know, I've worked in a startup before. Um, I've I've started up um, uh, a couple divisions within Trimble in my in my career. It is a unique um, it's a unique context. Uh, you know, I think our, our world is a much better place because of uh, of entrepreneurs and uh, and what they and what they do to continue to drive progress and innovation and, and good competition. Uh, I think that uh, you know your number one challenge, and if you're one of the, the the startups or young companies on the on the call, is to find that product market fit, and that's your fundamental. Right? If you can't uh, find that, um, really nail that initial product market fit, then there's then, then you won't be able to to, to move on from there. Um, now, many companies will find that product market fit. They will find that niche, and then the problem becomes the challenge becomes for the companies is how to scale. Um, the business. Uh, and, you know, the nature of agriculture is such that it's really a local, predominantly, it's a local, it's a local business. Um, and because of that, that present, pre presents a challenge for many companies to find that ability to get past that first million of revenue or that first five million uh, of revenue to really find themselves an ability to, to, to scale. And that comes back to, you know, where we see an opportunity in the Trimble Select program um, is to partner with companies that, you know, where it makes mutual sense um, to help create that market access because market access really becomes quickly. And we found um, at, in ag in particular of all the markets we work in at Trimble um, is, is really truly a local, uh, a local market. And then the last thing I think I, I would add to that, John, is when you think about the the, the needs of the the farmers and what we would what would we would relay at a thematic level there, uh, the first would be around um, ease of use, uh, this, which I think speaks for um, itself. We we tend to, to you know often develop things that are um, really sophisticated and really complicated, but remember it's who's using um, the product. Uh, easy, 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 and that's certainly something we've all learned in the world of mobile with mobile apps um, is that sort of switch of a mindset to how do you make it easy. Uh, the second is tangible ROI. So, you know, ROI, uh, at Trimble level, we think about productivity, quality, safety, uh, transparency, and environmental sustainability. So if you've got real ROI that you can demonstrate to a farmer, they're they want to make a profit, yeah. right? So that's yeah. a good thing. So demonstrable ROI that's easy to understand, technology that's easy to use. And then the aspect of local support, um, and this really goes back to the, to, to the nature of this industry. Um, so, you know, we see the, 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 the network of technology dealers, um, of retailers, of agronomists are important parts of the ecosystem that, um, you know, really can't be, I think, uh, ignored. Um, they can't be discounted. Yeah, yeah. 
That's great, Rob. I think uh, when we were chatting with uh, Secretary Purdue, he kind of said something very similar on the farmers. Farmers are business people, and ultimately they have to drive revenue and, and reduce costs and, and, and run a business. And if you can help them you know, you know, reduce costs and make them more efficient, you know, that, that's going to resonate with them. And I think also from our perspective, we've, we've probably worked with nearly 5,000 startups from all over the world. And I think once a, a company has a product and it's in market, I mean, the single biggest challenge that we hear time and time again is just that route to market, um, you know, getting and growing their, build, their business, not just one farm at a time, but, you know, countries at a time and being going from, US to you know 80 90 countries is is very very difficult and I think that's where I think Trimble Select is a great uh, you know channel uh, for, for companies to, to get on board because you're already on a trusted platform that's already out there you know so which is which is great um, you know another thing I know a lot of entrepreneurs will be interested in is what technology are you or Trimble interested in out there as they're kind of particular areas that you see are important for the future and either internally or externally, you're, you're going to be taking a very close look at? Well, I'd start with the value proposition. So kind of reinforcing um, where if, if folks on the phone, um, you know, where the technology is delivering that productivity, quality, safety, uh, transparency, and sustainability. So that ROI that fits into what we do at, uh, at, at Trimble where there's a fit, that's a good place. Uh, that's a good place to be. Um, thematically, I come at it from a couple different perspectives. One would be an ability to, to localize um, solutions and, um, and you know extend that. Uh, and the second would be really to extend the hardware and the software offerings um, that we have, um, you know, the platform uh, that we have. So if we take localization as an example, I think that the attendee list you showed with the number of countries around the world um, mm. is, I mean, that really nails the point. And, and in fact, I think you said it was about 40, 60, 40 um, North America, 60% outside North America today. You know, that's pretty close to actually the Trimble business is predominantly outside of, um, outside of North America today. Um, the world's a big place. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to meet uh, localized needs and and all the markets um, where we have participants um, today. So take a Brazil, take a Ukraine, take um, take Russia as an example. Um, often the technology needs to be localized, and that's more than translating software into the local local language. That's straightforward. That's easy. Um, it's really understanding how the workflow is, is different, um, how the conditions um, are different. Going back to that crop type, farm size, um, you know, segmentation we talked about earlier. So where where our products can be, uh, I'll say, extended and localized is a pretty um, is a valuable is a valuable thing for us. Um, from extending the technology platform that we have, if I go back to that you know, or just sort of visually or mentally go back to the, the slide with the, that talked about the scale and scope that we have um, in, the, uh, in the industry, um, where we think about how can we extend that, that platform. So that could look like um, uh, optimization tools, engines, whether that's for the machines uh, or employees or field operations. Um, it can look like fleet optimization. So how you can bring visibility to everything that's happening uh, on the farm. Um, a third one is machinery um, automation tools, uh, a couple of which you know, are in the Trimble Select uh, program um, today. Uh, and then increasingly, you know, go back to the data opportunity that we, we see at Trimble. Again, that's something we think is pretty unique uh, capability to connect the physical and digital, the hardware, the software, the office, the, the field. As that progresses, this data opportunity progresses within the industry for, for the whole industry, not just um, Trimble. I think uh, machine learning tools will be increasingly um, interesting. Uh, those machine learning tools that help the farmers um, you know, maximize and perform uh, their work in the field in the most efficient way possible, uh, that I think is going to be a really interesting area of, of technology progression. Hmm. Excellent, thank, thank you, Rob. Um, you know, the autonomous farm is obviously, you know, uh, a vision for the future and it's obviously hard to do it when, you know, many rural environments don't have the connectivity or the broadband. And I know listening to, say, Beth Ford from, from Land of Lakes, she talks about this as being one of the most vital things that can be done. It's like the electrification of, you know, uh, you know of, of the U.S., 
you know, 40, 50 years ago, whereas today many companies are, are you know, uh, farms are unconnected. How, how are you dealing with that challenge or how, how are you, how, how, do you, how does Trimble kind of deal with the expansion of uh, connectivity? Yeah, it, it is a real topic. And actually, I listened to your um, discussion with Secretary Purdue, and I thought he did a really nice job um, talking about uh, this topic. And we've actually been uh, engaged with, with him and in the in the U.S. with some of the rural broadband uh, initiatives. Um, this is a real um, topic. So uh, I, mean, I think we would understand it, understand it from a, even a maybe a simpler perspective of in-field diagnostic, remote diagnostics um, and uh, repair in order for that to happen um, quickly and broadly. So we have interesting examples we've talked about here during the, uh, the, the pandemic, but it's not ubiquitous, right? So, you know, there's, a, there's certainly an opportunity there and a need and a value uh, for that to, to happen. The other area is we go into artificial intelligence, we get into machine learning, you know, it'd be our hypothesis that the real compute power on that will happen in the cloud. So not on the edge, not necessarily in the field, but in the cloud and it's sort of fullest manifestation and opportunity. So if that processing is going to happen in the cloud, you got to have connectivity to the, uh, to the cloud, which broadband would, you know, clearly be uh, important um, for, for, for that. Um, and then, yeah, you take it to, to its logical um, extension and to an autonomous uh, and to an autonomous farm. You have to have connectivity, not only to the cloud, but machine to machine um, con connectivity. Uh, and you probably need redundancy, actually, of, uh, of connectivity in that uh, in that context. Um, so these are important um, uh, topics. Uh, so, yeah, I mentioned what we're doing uh, here in the in the U.S. Um, with the FCC Rural Broadband Initiative. Uh, in Brazil, we're working with uh, Connect Our uh, Agro. So that's um, a number of technology providers in Brazil have, have come together um, to, to provide, uh, to work on providing connectivity uh, into rural Brazil. Um, those are a couple of examples, but obviously there's a lot of other examples uh, around, uh, around the world. Um, and increasingly, I think, you know, we're, we're seeing, um, we, we, we're, when we talk about 5G uh, at, at the moment, we're seeing um, how many countries are starting to view this almost, almost with a national security um, over, overlay. Um, and so that would suggest uh, to me that we'll continue to see uh, countries in, invest in their own uh, connectivity, which one would tend to believe would be ultimately be good for the farmers. Yeah. And my last question is probably going to lead us into our polls is what is shaping the precision ag industry? And I don't know, maybe Jess can also maybe pull up some of our polls as well and we can kind of reflect on, on, on those. Well, you know, if, if we think about, well, I guess we could look at the, uh, uh, the poll here as, as well as, so I see the, the um, and I presume everybody can see the poll results here. Yes. Um, yeah, and the first one on, on profitability, um, I think that that's, that's where we would start. And, and you know, the distinction we would, I'd like to make uh, is uh, profitability as opposed to talking about yield. You know, um, we often, I think, in the industry talk about yield um, optimization. And of course, it correlates to the profitability, um, but it doesn't necessarily equal uh, profitability. And so, you know, this is, and it, it, this kind of reinforces the, the Secretary Purdue's point um, as well as, um, you know, helping farmers um, optimize profitability. And I think that's, you know, that is the fundamental, you know, our return on investment that the uh, farms are looking for. Mm -hmm. And I see our, our second question. Uh, what do you see as the technology drivers transforming agriculture? And it looks like 39% of people are saying automation um, followed kind of neck and neck between biotech and, um, and modeling. No surprise there. No, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what do you believe consumers are most interested in about their food? Ooh, cost. Uh, that's uh, interesting to cost and availability uh, of the end product is coming out, you know, 50% of what people said. And then secondly, food safety. I think I'm kind of slightly surprised by that, but um, what, what, what do you think, Rob? Well, I think, you know, at the moment, and I think maybe this has something to do with the, with the pandemic, we're certainly seeing this in some of the field of, uh, in the medical field. I, I think there's probably an aspect of national security, which um, we might see, 
coming into food security, uh, essentially. So I would call, I would correlate that to availability uh, mm -hmm. of the end product um, from a perspective of uh, of cost. You know, one of the things you know we would expect, and as economies around the world continue uh, to develop, that makes sense to me that it would correlate to uh, protein consumption, uh, and protein consumption is going to correlate to cost. So I could see the connection here that um, you know we might have different answers um, around the world potentially on some of these uh, on some of these topics uh, as, as as well. Yeah. And I think the last question was, uh, what do you think uh, is the most impactful practice used in regenerative uh, farming? And it looks like 33% of people are saying rotation of livestock to cover crops. Uh, 31% of people saying no tillage, 25% carbon sequestration. So um, kind of a third, a third, a third almost there between, between those. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. And I mean, this one, I think we still have, yeah, time, time will tell, um, I, I think. Um, we've certainly, this topic's gotten a lot um, more, more press in the, last, uh, in the last few years. And uh, I think, you know what, what's going to be interesting is to see if we see more um, uh, carbon trading systems uh, that uh, you know if those come into effect in, in more places around the world I, I could expect that we might see um, some of the answers change as well yeah so I, I've uh, do you want to maybe bring up the Q&A you can, you can you should be able to see it uh, here as well um, the uh, and th th this is everybody's questions live. They're upvoted, so we're going to take the, the top ones. And I'm not surprised to see 5G high, high up there. Uh, what will 5G mean for Trimble? Is it relevant? Also, the Starlink system uh, by SpaceX, will this have an impact? Uh, and that's from John Norwood. Yeah, so I think the... Well, actually, the whole yeah, area of um, the, the, the low Earth uh, orbiting uh, satellites, um, that is going to be interesting to see the, the efficacy uh, of that. And we're going to start to see, I think, some trials uh, of that pretty soon because it is, that is potentially the way we get uh, broad, um, more broadband connectivity or certainly better connectivity uh, on a, into, rural, into rural communities. Now, that'll take time, but I think it's really interesting to know. Um, now, I think with, with SpaceX as well, as we have to separate um, uh, the hype from the reality, <laughs> and, um, but I think the uh, I, I think those will converge. It, it, it makes sense that they would converge at some point. Um, just you know, maybe not in the next uh, in the next couple of years. Uh, from the aspect of five G, well, I go back to my, my comment as I see an aspect of national security um, here um, that uh, some uh, not all, but some economies are, are taking at the uh, at the moment. And so we see that uh, we see that playing out at, at, at the moment, uh, whether it's a, a Huawei or um, Ericsson, Nokia. Um, and yeah. so there's a lot of, you know, <laughs> I don't know that a few years ago we would have said 5G will, will equal geopolitics, but that is where um, we seem to be at the moment. Um, and um, it does seem that the number of countries and, and governments um, are getting behind uh, the importance of connectivity, um, which mm -hmm. I think will ultimately be a net, a net good thing for the farmers and therefore a net good thing um, yeah. for, for, for Trimble. Uh, next question up at the top of the list here is from Rob Wertheimer. Uh, what are the biggest opportunities to improve yield and costs for farmers? And what are farmers willing to pay for? Will, par will farmers pay for data analytics? Will farmers pay recurring past models? Yeah. So, well, um, uh, Rob, congratulations on your uh, on your book that that, that came out. Um, uh, what I would say in terms of farmers' uh, willingness to, uh, to to pay uh, for for technology, I, I think it really comes back to that that ROI, that return on investment. That you can see that it's a tangible um, return on investment. I think where um, uh, in terms of business models and how those will change over time. Um, you know, there we'd be talking things like recurring revenue models or SaaS models um, in the software world. We're certainly experimenting with these models. We have models both on our, some of our hardware products and, of course, the, the software side is, uh, as well. Um, 
I think it's really early to know. Uh, I think time will tell. But certainly, if you look at other industries and you look at other markets, we've seen really dramatic changes um, in business models. Um, so pitcher um, selling uh, based on outcomes uh, achieved. Um, I think we could really see some interesting uh, models change uh, over over time. But I would say over time. I mean, we're not there. Uh, we're not there today. Um, and in terms of, I think the other question was around um, yield optimization. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and and kind of what will what will drive that? Well, gosh, we see that from so many different directions. Whether it's you know from the um, the, the biotech uh, side, um, or it's the production side. So there's a lot of people coming at a lot of different angles um, on on yield. And you know we've certainly seen you know dramatic improvements in yield from the confluence um, of of technology in the in the last years. And you've got to expect that that will only uh, only continue over time. Great. And we have another question from Constantine Papadakis. Uh, what phase of agricultural production is most prime or, uh, for digitization? Um, uh, that's a good question, Constantine. Um, in, in terms of what part of ag is most ripe for, for digitization, I think anywhere where we have uh, paper-based processes, so in this case, I might be talking about mid to larger size farms um, when, when I say this, um, you know, an, an ability um, in a market uh, of uh, where it's difficult to find skilled labor uh, this, uh, and you have inefficiencies uh, in that aspect of the, of the chain. I think that's right for digitization, um, that connection between um, what you're planning in the, I'll call it the office, um, and how you get that actually out in, into the field. That workflow we see is really ripe um, for digitization, and actually the connectivity plays into that as as well. Um, you know, so let's not have to manually input um, the prescription we're going to take into the field. Let's not let's go beyond taking um, a USB stick um, out into the field and actually having real time flow uh, of data. Um, that to me seems ripe uh, for uh, for digitization. Okay. I'll do one or two, two last questions, quick ones uh, for, you, for you, Rob. You're getting a lot of questions here, which is great. Um, Mike Tate uh, is asking, uh, as digitizing drives optimization for time-sensitive decisions making, or time-sensitive decision making, how do you see Trimble's growth focus changing to ma- managing the, with edge computing as part of your solution portfolio? I know Mike is from FreeWave, so I know they're very keen on the edge uh, Living on the edge. Yeah, sure, Mike. Um, so good, good question. So I think I think, think about it in two ways because there is an element of the uh, of edge computing, um, and that is important. And then I also think about a, a world where we get into, uh, I'll say, more sophisticated um, AI and, uh, and and machine learning, which I think has an aspect of having to get actually back to the cloud um, to really have its full full potential. So I think we actually have both. We have um, developments that certainly happen um, on the edge. So uh, if I take the spot spray systems we have today, um, you know, we can reduce uh, herbicide usage um, by up to 90% mm. um, by, you know, be, being able to detect um, that that is a weed. Um, you know, uh, so there is intelligence that already happens uh, on, on the edge today. Uh, and I think that, you know, of course, that's happening through uh, the embedded software. And I think that that will only continue to see uh, to see more of that. So there's some aspects um, of, uh, uh, of the uh, algorithms which you can, uh, you can have resident um, on the edge for that quick, for the quick cycle. Uh, and then in the years to come after that, I think when we've got you know, more ubiquitous um, you know, high speed uh, communication broadband um, available, now I think the ability to, to have that um, matching up to the cloud um, is, will take us to even another, another level. So first frontier edge, second frontier uh, I see happening in the cloud. Excellent. Thank you, Rob. Last question, I promise. I, I, I'm going to pick it up because augmented reality. What do you think about augmented reality in the near future for farmers? Um, so, hey, it is an interesting application. So actually Trimble is quite active um, in the whole realm of mixed reality today. We have a partnership with Microsoft on the HoloLens um, to which you could do a Google search on. And that is a great manifestation of connecting the physical and the digital um, and the digital worlds. Um, so we've got more applications today um, in the world of, of construction. So, you know, um, we can put up the mixed reality device and, um, and we can see 
um, the uh, mechanical electrical runs you're going to have in a building or where the bridge or the clover leaf is going to be on a highway um, construction or where the home is going to be in uh, in context uh, of the site um, on a farm where we could see that um, application happening is let's go back to the service uh, and the support uh, and and the training and to be able to connect um, those together to create a more immersive experience to, to train um, and work with customers. Um, the second would be actually we see uh, abilities to overlay augmented reality into the displays that we have in the field um, today. So to, to, to essentially to be able to um, augment um, what you're actually seeing forward uh, in the field and providing that sort of additional um, overlay of awareness uh, as well as uh, intelligence, and so I think it'll. I th we think it'll come. We see it in some of the markets we have um, today. It would be a logical conclusion to believe that um, there's going to be a play in the uh, in the agriculture market over time. The size of what the full opportunity is, I think that remains to to be seen because it's still such early days. Um, in the mixed reality um, world, but just think about the, you know, it's like a, being a probably a, a pilot uh, in, a, in a cockpit. The number of um, sensors you and, and information you have coming at you when you're on that farm, and let's just say you're in the you're in the field. There is a lot happening there, um, and so there is a ripe context there um, to make uh, to make things easier and simpler um, for farmers through the use of this technology. That's fantastic. Uh, and uh, really, I mean, such a broad area. Uh, it's incre incredible to see what Trimble are doing, uh, you know, in, in the field across the supply chain. And uh, really, thank you, Rob. I really enjoyed the conversation. And um, we'll have to have you back again. I know there's uh, questions uh, still, still rolling in, but a big thank you to, to you. And, and also want to thank your team. Your team have been really fantastic to work with. Um, and um, you know, look forward to to doing more together as well. I appreciate what you're what you're doing with this series and with uh, and with our community. So keep up the good work, and thanks for having us. Thank you, Rob, and stay stay safe. All right. And uh, I just before I sign off, I just wanted to give you a little bit of an update in terms of uh, what's going to be coming up next. Um, maybe. Uh, if, if anybody is interested in either engaging with any of our corporate partners or if you want to become a corporate partner or our global challenges, which we uh, announced earlier, you know, we'll be, we'll be announcing the global challenges, all the partners and the activities on those in, on September 4th. So if you're interested in, in participating on those, contact us uh, on our website under corporate innovation. Uh, on the next slide. Um, we have uh, a really great uh, session coming up uh, on the 23rd of July, uh, Founders of Plenty. I think as many of you know, uh, controlled environment agriculture is a reality. These are, this is probably the leading company in the world uh, today that is, uh, has a facility in a, and um, a lab in uh, just South San Francisco and, and um, they're really making a a really big play backed by the likes of SoftBank and uh, they've, they've hit the kind of billion dollar, you know, uh, mega company uh, startup. So delighted to be able to chat with the two founders uh, at our next, next session. So with that, I'd like to sign off. Uh, thank you to Rob and the Trimble team. Uh, I'd like to thank my team, Jess, behind the scenes has been able to keep us all on time mostly. And uh, I want to thank you for joining us today. It's been a great discussion. Thank you for for checking in. If you want to learn any more, you can go onto our website for the next uh, upcoming uh, events. Take care, stay safe, and stay healthy. Take care.